How could you, in one, one sentence, erase everything that this woman lived for? Hello, Table Talkers. Welcome back to Table Talk Ninja. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome and thank you for joining us. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. And to our old subbies, we say thank you for always coming back. On the 14th of June, 2020, Nigeria lost a jewel. Ibidu Igodalo was larger than life. She was 39 and at that age, she was already a philanthropist, an entrepreneur, an event planner, a pastor's wife, a pastor herself. Mm -hmm. She was a beauty queen already. She was just, she was everything. She lived a full life. And she'll be remembered mm -hmm. as someone who lived a good life. Um, mm -hmm. She was known as a pastor's wife who had struggled with infertility and as a result devoted her life to helping other families get what she couldn't biologically. Okay, guys. We, we agree, we can all agree that there's freedom of speech, right? You're free to think whatever you like, to say whatever you like, but there, there are certain things that we must come to agree that it is in, inappropriate, like in a million years should not be uttered. Now, the, the, mm -hmm. these are the comments that, that prompted this video today. But before we jump into these comments, this incredibly insensitive and insane comments mm -hmm. um would like to talk a little about um Ibidu's life. she was a lovely incredible woman and she had suffered a lot um of heartbreaks and eventually she decided that enough is enough and she decided to take life and you know the experiences that she had, had by the horn and redefine what her experience was redefine what her narrative was okay so Ibidu Ibidu got married at 26. She was pretty young, right? 26, very good age to get married. But by, before she turned 30, she found out that she couldn't have babies. Now, if you're, if you're African, you know that this is a big problem. We carry, our, uh, we carry our fertility like a badge of honor, right? We put it on our gele, we put it on our blouses, put it on our shoes. It just goes everywhere with us. It's like fertility, you're, you're all about fertility. So if you if you're struggling with if you're struggling with infertility, it's either you there's something wrong with you, right? Or or we can't we can't just understand it. It has to be something you've done, right? You must have mm -hmm. gods, or you must have been reckless with your life. So you can imagine the 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 pressure, the pain that this young lady was was under at, at this very young age. To further complicate issues. She was married to a pastor who had been married previously and that marriage, that union did not produce any children or any issues. And so it became a case of who done it, but really is it anybody's business? I mean, why, why should anybody pop nose and chook their mouth in what is not their issue? But anyway, it became a case of who done it. And in our African context, in our Nigerian context, in the cultural setting in which we live in and we find ourselves, automatically the fingers are pointed to the woman. And so mm. it becomes a case of she has that, you know, she something is wrong with her and all of that. But before we go into what Ibidu's issues were and her fertility um, concerns, let's digress a little bit. For those of you who are wondering that how could a respectable man of God have an ex-wife and have a current wife, right? Mm. Here, is, here is what happened. Here is his side of the, of the story as told by him. So before he became a pastor, he was a man of the world. He was 100% man of the world. There was nothing he didn't do, according to him. I didn't say it. He said it. Okay. So when he gave his life to Christ and became a pastor, he, he decided to settle down and, and get a wife, right? A friend of his introduced him to this lovely lady. And he thought that was, you know, the right thing to do as, you know, a devout Christian. And lo and behold, it turned out to be more in tune to God than to his marriage. Okay, so naturally, the lady got frustrated, and that was what eventually tore them apart. And now, this is, of course, as, as with every story, there are two sides to the story. We don't have the ex wife's part That's of the story, true. but this is what he has said. But just going by what he has said, it does sound like a credible story, right? Because he's not like 
imputing mm-hmm. any blame to the lady. He's just saying this was what his own role was in this. And of course, we with our very, you know, I always come for us, our ultra religious folk. How can a pastor be divorced? Hello? Like, seriously. So, you know, we, we judge what merit he has to be a pastor because he has been divorced. And so mm. a lot of us have things to say. I don't know. You might not. What do you think about it? What do you think? Well, I'm just going to open that to you. What do you think about it? Mm. Having a pastor have be divorced? Well, now that we've given you some backstory, let's go all in into this story about Ibido's life here with us and how people treated her. Initially, I... Ex- like every, every girl, I thought as soon as I'm married, a year or two, I'll have my mm-hmm. kids, you know. And a year passed, the second year, and I was still quite, you know, just having fun because mm-hmm. I had, you know, like looked after myself while mm-hmm. I was in school. Mm-hmm. And I felt like, okay, I was ready for the next stage of my life. And I started getting worried at the third year. Mm-hmm. And I thought to myself, okay, what's going on? And people have their own definition of how you should live your life, mm-hmm. what you should do. And just even before I started to think and get worried, they had already started telling me, I mean, we all know Pastor Ito was married before. Mm-hmm. So they had already started telling me, oh, he was married before and he didn't have kids. So be ready that something is going to happen to you. And I thought to myself, you, you can't say that to me, mm-hmm. you know, but that in itself started putting me under a bit of pressure. You know, something that I would never have thought about. I mean, I, had, I would have just said, okay, but I mean, that, that was then. This is now. And I, I started going to hospitals, they going to doing tests, and I discovered that I fell into that category of infertile woman. And people would walk up to you and say things like, and you know when you get married, your weight fluctuates a bit, yeah. you know, you, you put on weight because you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you're happy you're cooking. <laughs> yes. So, and then, oh, you put on weight, I'm sure you're pregnant, you know, and you probably just finished crying at home because mm-hmm. you just saw your period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or somebody calls and says, oh, um, I was, I was, you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday and they said, oh, have you seen Ibidoni lately, you know, what's happening? We've done this wedding two years, you know, and what, mm. what, what, yes. I haven't heard about yes. the twins. Yeah. An aunt of mine came to the house, and because I love dogs, I love puppies, Veronica, you know, yes. you've seen them before. <laughs> and at the time, my, my puppy had 15 puppies. Aww. So I was still just looking after them, and she comes into the house and she says, no wonder you're not concerned about having kids when you're mm. busy breeding dogs. Mm-hmm. Mm. Those things are so hurtful. Mm, 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 mm. And sometimes your friends have kids, they have birthday parties, and you go, you want to carry a baby, and somebody's saying to you, oh, you have to carry the head a certain way, and somebody says, oh, she probably would not know how to carry it because she's never had one. Mm. Okay, first of all, first of all, like seriously, seriously, how could you, what gave you the impetus what gave you the temerity what gave you the guts what gave you the thinking that you could actually say all this rubbish and spew all this filth and evil from your mouth i mean what the audacity i don't care if you're my cousin uncle brother sister i mean what what gives you the right no working say these things to another human being it is, it is, it is, it's, be, it's just, it's, this is below the belt, you know, and I don't know, I don't understand how people can shift and become so insensitive and become so, so mean spirited because you have people who are, who are just nice and gentle children and everything. And then they grow up to be this mean, really rotten human beings. How does that happen? It, it, it beats me, honestly. It's like, who, who do we blame here? Do we blame their parents? Like, how do you go from a sweet, innocent child to an adult who doesn't care that, that you're, you're, you're relieving your, your, your shame and pressure by oppressing someone else? Like, do we blame the, the neighborhood they grew up in? Do we blame their friends? Is it just lack of sensibility? Because I don't understand how somebody would walk up to another human being and think you know better about their life than they do. Mm. And she says, 
No wonder you're not concerned no. about having kids when no. you're busy breeding dogs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Those things are so hurtful. Mm -mm. Excuse me? Say what? Busy breeding dogs? Are you kidding me? Please, please just help me understand the motive of this, this statement. Help me understand what she was thinking. How on earth could I you think that she would possibly love dogs more than she would love herself? I mean, like how? What effect was this anti-thinking she was going to have on her? Like, I don't know. Like, how, how, how many times we joke about these things with friends, with sisters, with cousins, with... I mean, you know, they call you up and ask you, when are you going to have a baby? Uh-uh, oh, it has been long. Why is, you know, I mean, why? Why do we think that we have that, we, we have that right, we have that ground Who to do this? you the right? I mean, seriously, you're not called in months. Think, you don't know about what, it. what that person's struggle is. You don't know how they are struggling and, and exactly. coping with infertility. And then you have that insensitivity. You're just being nosy for no reason. I, I had appendicitis and I had a surgery done. It was taken up, it wasn't done properly here in Nigeria. I then developed infections, and the infection blocked my tubes, mm -hmm. both tubes. So I can't have, except God does it in his own time, I, I have to do IVF, mm -hmm. you know, to yeah. bypass the mm -hmm. tubes. I mm -hmm. try to open them mm -hmm. up. I've done mm -hmm. surgery to open them up. Mm -hmm. I've, I've cut the parts that are, that are blocked, join them together. I've done all sorts of stuff before I eventually said, okay, you know what, let me just go do mm -hmm. IVF. From the first one, my goodness, it is a roller coaster. Mm. Your emotions, first the injections that they give you, mm. they take you like that. It's, it's, it, it, you're moody. Mm. It, 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 it just messes everything up, your whole system. But you have to take them for a set, like 30 days. Mm. And then you have to go for scans every day. So today you're happy because you, your eggs, you're responding to the injection. Mm. When it's time to harvest the eggs, when you get the news that out of 24 eggs, they could only get two good ones, your mood just, it, it, it's such a roller coaster. When they then fertilize the eggs with the sperm, some of them fertilize the first day, you're happy. You have to wait 24 hours for it to divide into two. Mm. You're waiting. Sometimes the cycle stops at fertilization. You have to start all over again. Mm. Sometimes it divides into two, then four, then eight before embryo transfer. Sometimes it stops at just eight. Sometimes it goes all the way. They do the transfer back. You have to wait two weeks to test whether you're pregnant. Sometimes it comes out negative. Before the two weeks, you start bleeding. All of the 11 IVFs, they, had, they, they come out with different results, but it's such a roller coaster. It's such a, it's pain. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. emotionally draining, mm -hmm. psychologically, you stop leaving. I, I actually stopped leaving. I was just existing. Mm -hmm. Because you just keep chasing after. You, you, you always it's think it's that the next yeah. one yeah, is going to work. Yes. The next one is going to work. The next mm -hmm. one is going to work. The last one I did worked. I had mm -hmm. a set of twins. But I had a miscarriage at three months. That was very traumatic. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to not get pregnant and know how mm -hmm. it feels. It's another thing to eventually get pregnant and you're saying oh my goodness yeah. and then wow. you lose it it was really bad 11 ivfs 11. let's take a moment and think about that how could one person one person go through that pain that invasion do you have you ever asked anyone who does ivf probably who's done ivf how it goes it's it's incredibly invasive it's incredibly painful honestly guys i teared up like i was i cried when she died of course i cried i didn't mm. even know how but i was i cried yeah. and then when i saw this story of her going through ivf mm. 11 times and and mind you mind you she had done several surgeries to correct the the tube blockage before she even in, started the 11 ivf it's right. it's incredible how much how much strength how much resilience she had in her yeah. and then for someone to come out of nowhere and, and tell her rubbish we need to stop this yeah but you know just imagine the zeal imagine the perseverance imagine how tasking imagine how draining this was and you know she was all about you know 
she stopped leaving and she was just looking for that next successful one you know and I can't even begin to imagine what her pain was. I, to be honest, I can't. I mean, I, I think I felt a little bit of it. And people who knew Ibidun knew that she was someone who felt people's pain. Maybe because of what she went through, she was able to sympathize a lot with people. But imagine the pain that she went through. I mean, let's get one thing straight, okay? Nobody, again, nobody likes failure and then it's especially true when you have failed multiple times in something that you have seen thousands upon thousands of people excel out effortlessly with no issues with no problems even people who are not even trying then they just i mean voila and meanwhile you're there struggling with the same thing and having failure time and time and time again it is it is an excruciating kind of pain it is a deep kind of hurt it's a deep kind of wounding of the soul seriously guys i cried i cried in every form possible i bawled i i mm -hmm. sobbed i mm -hmm. i yelled it was it was a lot it, it, it yeah. being being a, a woman it was it was really a lot and and i think what what really prompted us to to come talk about this is because it was another a fellow woman that made this incredibly incredibly insane comment about her insensitive how could you erase that like, like this was all she portrayed she portrayed herself as a happy person a happy woman who was happily married to a supportive husband and had lovely children I'm going to come out and say that she probably wasn't happy. That's why she had died of a heartbreak. Come on, come on. That that's just not acceptable. That that's is not right. Like, if anyone out there is having those thoughts, you should talk to your thoughts. Like talk to the mind of your mind. That they, why why are we so evil? Hmm. It beats me. I don't understand. I really don't understand. Now, in spite of everything that she went through, in spite of all that she endured look at what she did how she turned things around it is simple while you're waiting while you're waiting for your miracle your own breakthrough hold other people's hands and walk them through you know their own situations their own problem help them stand on their own two feet she she completely refused to put her life on hold she refused to be angry she refused to just sit and do nothing she took charge of that situation she took she took charge of her circumstances mm -hmm. and she adopted two children and and helped so many families, helped so many families along their journey with mm. infertility, and actually had you know positive outcomes from that with several babies coming through. Ibido was going to turn forty on the nineteenth of July, if I'm not mistaken, and she had this great plan. Her great plan for her birthday was to give forty families, forty families, babies to help them for 40 families struggling with infertility to help them bring um find the joy of parenthood what could be more noble than that like that was all she wanted for her 40th birthday right. and and it was really incredibly hurtful when when we came across this comment by a fellow woman who says oh it's it's a shame that she's dead, you know, but she really thinks or she really believes that that she died of a heartbreak because she probably wasn't happy in her marriage. And I'm like, say what? And How? someone else had the nerve to say that after all, she was married to somebody else's husband. Like, really? Really, guys, really? I mean, it's inconceivable, the things that go on in some people's mind and that they have no filters, they have no barriers, they just spew out that garbage. It's, it's, it's pathetic, really, uh, and, and it's, it should be disdained in all forms. So the next time you have any of those yeah, crazy kind of thoughts that make you want to vilify somebody, especially someone who was in all respects, something close to a saint please keep your crazy thoughts to yourself we don't need them we don't need any more negativity we don't need any more of those 
criticisms. We don't need any of those evil comments. Just keep them to yourself. It's unacceptable. I think what we really need to focus on as human beings is to change ourselves, right? Don't worry about the next person. Try to right. be the best version of you that you can be. And if you're the best version of you, you won't go about dropping negative comments about people. Mm-hmm. It's 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 simply not nice to say it like no. this. Not nice. Yeah. This is Table Talk Ninja. Thank like. you. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, sh- share with us those thoughts and comments that you have concerning the beautiful, incredible Ibidun Igodalo and any respects that you have. And maybe share some comments that you've had with these internet trolls and people who go around saying evil and mean things. And what no. are some of the ways in which you can combat that?